Hey guys, this is Jermaine Morgan and you're watching Jermaine Morgan TV Live. And today I wanted to take some time out and address a question that I've been being asked over and over again. How are you getting that bass sound? So we're going to talk about it just for a quick second. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, I was playing around with this little groove here. Let's jump right into it.
<laughs> What's up, everybody? All right. So I, again, I wanted to jump on here really, really quick and talk about something that I'm constantly if I had to go and if somebody asked me, man, what's your top video comment? It's probably people asking, how are you getting that sound? What are you doing? How are you running your bass? And I know in particular, most people want to know as it regards um, to how I'm recording. What am I using? What are the types of things you're using, you know, to get that, whatever that sound, that sound is. And everybody, I see y'all in, the, in the, the live comments for everybody watching in the replay. You don't have no idea what I'm talking about. But for everybody that's watching this live, I see you. And hello to everybody. I'm not going to go through all the names like I do on Grooves and Motivation, but I do see you. Hello and thank you for the comments and everything. But again, this is supposed to be really, really quick. I wanted to just, again, address real time what I'm doing. So for the most part, guys, I'm running direct. Um, most of the bases that I play, some of you guys have seen the Warrior. You've seen the Serene bass that I'm normally playing. It's right here, the Custom Serene. Um, these both are outfitted with custom preamps by Bartolini. Uh, both these bases are uh, two different, you know, brands of bases, but they're both outfitted with uh, custom preamps by Bartolini. But the uh, Fender that I have there is not Bartolini. Uh, so are the Squire, the other two Squire bases that I play. Those bases are stock. I haven't, to answer those questions, I haven't changed anything in those bases and then for the sake of this video today i don't know how i'm gonna do it i'm not able to do any edits and cuts so y'all seeing all this real time but for the sake of of those bases i'm not um i haven't changed any of the the preamps in that fender uh the squire none of that stuff so i'm gonna, I'm gonna try to pull out some of this stuff without making a complete uh mess over here but yeah so i'll i'll play this one just a little bit so you can get us uh I feel for it. I haven't played this bass, so it's probably out of tune. Not too bad. Alright, so everything in this particular bass is stock. I pulled out again. This is the, probably the cheapest and eh, one of the cheapest bases in this room. And so it, it has nothing to do with price and all that type of stuff. The point I wanted to make in terms of the sound and, and the sound that I'm getting, majority of it, I will say this, the disclaimer, you've heard me say this if you've been around for some of my other videos, the disclaimer, most of the tone does come from your actual hands. And what I mean by that is the way that you touch the bass, uh, the way that your fingers feel. I got a good friend of mine, uh, Elijah, I don't know if he's watching this video, but that dude, whatever bass he picks up, he can get his tone on any bass that he picks up. Within a matter of seconds and kind of dialing in uh, some settings, he's able to get his tone. He sounds like him on every single bass that he plays. And if you know some professional cats or some more mature basses around you, you probably noticed that same thing about those guys. Whatever bass that they pick up, they're able to get their own tone in that particular bass. So the same thing here. Whatever bass I'm pulling up, I'm able to kind of go to it. And when I say your your tone is in your hands, your fingers, the way you touch the bass, your feel, all of that type of stuff, more particularly um, the way like over the pickups, where you play. I know for some of you guys, this is pretty elementary. You already know all this stuff. But it's shockingly, it's a lot of people apparently who don't know this stuff because of the comments that I'm getting and the uh, questions that I'm getting about the different sounds that I'm getting. Like as far as uh, getting a clean sound, that's going to have everything to do um, with, I guess, the type of pickups and that type of stuff that you have in your bass. If they're doing a lot of buzzing and you're getting a lot of feedback and all that type of stuff. Also, the cables that you use as well. I'm, I'm looking for, you would have thought I had this right now, but I'm looking for like one of my newer, one of my newer pig haul cables, but I guess this is a, an even better example. You can see this cable is war, worn. I mean worn down. This is a pig haul cable that I use, but they are really, really good cables. As you can see, these are not new cables, and I still get a really good sound from these cables. I don't hear a lot of buzz and a lot of all of that different stuff. These are, I've been using pig haul cables for about, um, for about seven, maybe eight years. I think I got to go back and see how long I've been rocking with pig hog, but that's who I use pig. I'm going to put that in. And uh, so you can see that pig hog 
uh, cables. Uh, I think it's pighogcables.com. I'm just going to put pighog cables, do a Google search. So, so I don't do that. I don't want to uh, have to fact check and I was wrong. So pighog cables, I put that in the chat and I'm going to show it so you guys can go check them out. Pighog cables. Those are the cables that I use personally. And also getting a good tone, you also want to use good strings. Of course, we, again, when we're talking about pickups, when I have good pickups, it has a lot to do with your hand placement where you're placing your hand. Or... I didn't change none of my settings just now, but it's just about the placement of where I put my hands. Again, of course, we can dial in better tones uh, depending on the sound that we're looking for. You know, maybe kind of back off of that front pickup if we're looking for a more staccato, uh, jocko-ish type sound. We can do all that, but, you know, I'm not going to go through all that different stuff. But basically, whatever bass that you have is another thing I want to add. You want to go through that bass. You want to go through and find all the different tone settings. That... Um, my uh, uh, Isabella bass that I was playing by Warrior, I've been had that bass over 10 years, and I'm still finding new sounds that I like because I'm constantly exploring. And, you know, because most of us, once we find something we like, you tend to kind of stick with that three or four settings that you find in that. But if you keep tweaking around, you will find a lot of uh, different tone qualities in in different bases, especially when they have a, an advanced preamp set up or something that has a little bit more control in the preamp range. You know what I'm saying? You're able to really go in and dial in some different things. Uh, so anyway, th those are some things you want to look at. And strings, like I said, I was about to mention strings. I think with this particular bass, I'm using, uh, I think I'm using the Rock Brights, but this is an old set on this bass. I typically don't change the, the strings too often on this particular bass because of the types of sounds I'm looking for when I record. But uh, SIT rock brights are what i'm using for this particular bass all right and uh these are great sounding string now what i was playing on my um my warrior isabella and also my uh custom serene when you hear that bass they have a slightly different sound to them i'm using the power wound let me turn it right the power wound um the nickels by sit strings obviously i endorse SIT strings. You can check them out. Check out their website. You can find them. I think Guitar Center, you know, wherever your local music store, they're probably carrying the SIT strings. And I've been rocking with SIT for over 10 years now. I stand by those strings. They stand by me. <laughs> that, that helps with my sound. But uh, yeah, so those are some of the things that I'm using just for you guys who want to know all right, what, oh, what types of strings are you using? What types of cables are you using those are the things that i'm using cable wise string wise and um they come in handy for helping me you know in terms of improving the overall sound but ultimately you can buy a great bass you can have great strings you can have uh you know great cables all the great stuff but if you don't do the work of learning your instrument uh, it's, it's really going to benefit you really small. Like it's going to be a, a small level of benefit that you're going to get from having all this nice stuff and you don't really know your bass. You don't know your instrument. You haven't spent time with it and going through it. Uh, another thing that I've heard uh, older cats say, and this is with all due respect, uh, but like turning your bass down. I don't know how well you can hear it because of this microphone, but oftentimes it's good to just play and hear the actual instrument without it being EQ. I don't know if you can hear any of this because of this microphone, but yeah, like turning your bass down, turning the volume all the way off and just playing and hearing what your wood of your bass sounds like because all of your pickups are supposed to do is amplify what's already there. If it sounds great when the volume is off, then it should sound even better when you turn the volume up and as you begin to inch up stuff little by little and bring in highs and bring in your lows, boost your mids if you have control of your mids with the particular uh, EQ setup. As you bring in all those things, then you should hear the sounds that you're looking for in the bass 
Uh, um, if you're looking for more clarity and more brightness, obviously that's going to come from your treble. More low end is going to come from your bass. If you want like uh, that finger style stuff to cut through more, oftentimes you're looking to boost your mids a little bit more and, and kind of pan not all the way to the back pickup, but a little closer to that back pickup and play over that back bridge. Um, you know, and those are some of the, the little tips that you can do to help improve overall sound and what you're getting. Now, as far as when I record, when you hear me do the videos and like now I'm going live, I'm going direct in. I'm going straight into um, the um, mixing console or whatever you're using for your interface. I'm going straight into that. And if anything, sometimes I will use my TC Electronic Spectre Drive. And that's just a little bit of compression that I use. I rarely use the overdrive on here, uh, but there is an overdrive. Let me put it on. Hence them calling it Spectre Drive. You get a little bit of grit. So that's with the, uh, the, with the drive added. And, um, but yeah, this is without, uh, just to show you how little uh, compression that I'm using. This is with compression. Without. With. So you can hear like uh, the difference, maybe slightly, but yeah, that just a little bit of, um, you know, just a little bit of compression that I had. So Mamba uh, says, I, and I see the comments again, I, guys, I don't know how to, if I'm going to be able to get through all of these comments today, but I will, uh, let me see, answer this one. Do you have any exercises that you do to get dexterity? Norris Williams, what's up, man? Uh, dexterity, I... Man, that's a loaded question. <laughs> I would say go back. Uh, I would recommend you to a video, but I'm, I'm not sure which one I would recommend you to. I mean, just a simple chromatic exercise that you can do. I'll give you this one real quick. Just something super, super simple that you can do just for dexterity purposes. You know, just. It's not necessarily chromatic, but it's like a chromatic touch. You'd be surprised how that little simple stuff, just getting your fingers moving across the fretboard, how it works wonders. That's the actual chromatic. And then what you're working on also when you're doing that is you're trying to keep those fingers down, not having to fingers way up here because with building speed the longer your fingers are off of the fretboard the longer it's going to take you to get back that's time all that kind of stuff so I got really big hands so oftentimes it's difficult for me to keep you know those fingers close to the fretboard but those are the types of things you want to work on I hadn't did that in a while, but you know what I'm saying? So it's that little stuff that you want to do and just put a metronome on or another thing. What, I'm going to tell you something that I found real helpful. It's kind of like building your muscle memory while you're doing something else. So like I would do stuff like put, you know, you could do like a YouTube video or something or a TV, put the TV on, put a YouTube video on and just work on those exercises almost to the point where it becomes a no brainer. Because I think when you're focusing so hard, on trying to you know polish and clean which we want to do that but when you put so much attention on it, it 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 becomes more robotic more mechanical than it does something natural and you want it to be almost like speaking where you're not putting a lot of um i'm not saying putting a lot but overly putting too much emphasis on it you know what i'm saying you back away just a little bit and just allow 
your fingers to do the work. You know, you can speed it up, uh, speed it up, slow it down, that kind of thing. But basically get your hands in the motion of moving across this fretboard, getting comfortable with it and, and knowing your way around without necessarily. And when I talk about listening to videos, if you do have your bass uh, plugged up, have it really low. Don't play it loud. You know what I'm saying? Have it really low and force yourself to listen. Force yourself to feel where everything is at. And then like you're, mo you're also working. What this also does is you're working on multitasking. So you can pay attention to what's going on on the, the screen or, you know what I'm saying? You're not so much just glued to this to where you can't think and focus in any other setting. And that helps when you play live and you're dealing with distractions, not to get sidetracked by something catching you off guard. Just little simple exercises that you can do, little stuff like that that you can do that will help you to improve. Uh, I'm not going to say dexterity, but just overall being comfortable on the bass and being able to feel at home when you start doing, you know what I'm saying, whatever you start doing. You, that way you feel really at home when you do that kind of stuff. Um, so let me see, there's another question here. Samuel, what's up, Steven? Uh, Samuel says, do you add compression first in the chain or at the end of the pedal board chain? Good question. Me personally, I add it first. I add it first, it's like the first thing going through my chain. Uh, that's my personal preference. Uh, as being new to this instrument, what feedback do you, this is Norris, what feedback do you have towards understanding the theory and how it all works in how we play? If you started over again, how would you approach the instrument? Um, great question, Norris. I would say, man, fundamentals are golden learning the fundamentals are golden now i'm going to chase that question with something else that might be slightly contradictory part of the way that i learn i don't regret because i think the way that i learned music it was completely by ear and it made me have a different type of appreciation for music and i didn't go into it like i was green as it related to theory and all that kind of stuff and but by being green to a lot of this stuff, it made my ear really, really strong. Uh, you was just picking up stuff, picking it out, hearing things. And it's almost like you got thrown in the fire and you just had to figure it out. So I think that helped me over the years in ear training where I see a lot of musicians, even some of the people that I teach now that are having to go back after learning all these theory rules and stuff. They're having to go back and really work hard on ear training and in the way that I come up, like really spending a lot of time just learning music. Um, if I say one thing that I would do differently is I would go back and actually learn songs, a lot more songs the way that they go instead of <laughs> uh, the way I came up, you know, we learn it, we're going to put our own spin on it, but you're, you're putting your spin on it before you actually fully learn the song. So I would say go and learn the music I mean, even if you sound terrible, the more you put the reps in, in terms of learning music, a lot of the things that you're looking for, the things you're looking to learn, it's right there in the music. And if you copy and paste it to what you're doing, you're going to get there a lot faster simply by, you know, just copying and pasting. You're not having to reinvent the wheel. Whereas when we take the approach of we're trying to learn all of these we're trying to learn all of the information first. It's like we miss some of the fundamental things that come from simply learning music, just learning songs, having fun playing. So that, that would be one of the things I would say I would do differently is go back and really learn more songs. Like the songs I would just listen to for entertainment, I would pick my instrument up and just learn it. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff that, oh, that's a cool song. I would sit down and learn it. If I had to do it all over again, that's what I would do differently. Other than that, uh, the theory and that stuff, I really, really struggled when it came to me learning theory. Many of you that have been around for a while, you've heard me talk about that many times before. I really struggled in the theory area, but I don't regret that either because I think that helped me to better explain it to people. The way that I had to go about learning it helped me to develop a system to know how to explain it to people who are like me and just didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? Who grew up uh, predominantly by ear. And you didn't really understand all that theory stuff. So it really helped me to fully understand how to explain it to other people to give them a better uh, understanding of what it is I was doing. So, yeah, those are some some different things 
you know, that I would kind of look at if I if I was starting over from scratch again, knowing what I know now. Um, man, uh, sweet cuts by Dave. If you're still here, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat, Julius. Uh, nice to see you. It's 1.31 a.m. here in Germany. Man, thank you, man, for watching, being up that late. <laughs> uh, what loop pedal am I using? Right now, I'm still using my Digitech Jam Man stereo. But I will in the loop area, stay tuned. We're going to be bringing out, we're going to be rolling out some new stuff really soon. I got some more things coming down the pipe that I really want to share on this channel with you guys. And I'm looking forward uh, to some of the tips and some of the things I'm going to be sharing with you. So if you're not subscribed, you just happened up on this channel. I encourage you right now to go ahead and subscribe while we're getting ready to go out. I'm going to play. I guess I'll play my uh, six strings and I played everything else so far. Samuel, what's going on? Let me let me uh, let me reset this bass. And uh, I'll answer this question. How do you go about coming up with the groove to play on an original track you have to record on bass great question great 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 question i had something i had a similar question the other day someone asked me something very very similar to that and um my response my response to that question would be you want to make sure to to always have a reference it goes back to what i said earlier in terms of not reinventing the wheel find a reference if there is a style of music. Most of the time, the artist or the producer, if if you're um, recording something, most of the time they were inspired by something. You know, there's these rare times that you have an artist that they are completely original, which means everything is just it's like avant garde. You know, however you say it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it's just off the cuff. But most of the time, if they're that original, they're playing it themselves or they got their go to guys. But if you're somebody and you're coming in on something, most of the time a person is going to have an idea of something they're trying to go for, a type of sound that they're trying to go for. So what I would do in those situations, even as a producer, I would ask the artist, listen, what what are you um, what are you going for with this song? Can you send me a reference of two to three songs that you're trying to not necessarily mimic, but you're trying to go for this feel? I'll go ahead and ask for it that way. Uh, when it comes time for me to put the idea together, I have a ballpark of where I need to be that from tone uh, selection to, um, you know, the feel what I need to be going for, even where my hand need to, uh, needs to be positioned in the bass. It helps me to know what bass to use. If I know that you're looking for a 70s feel for a song, well, I'm going to grab that Jaguar. You know, I know I can get closer to the feel that you're looking for with that bass. Now I can mimic that tone on the other basses, but if I know exactly what you're looking for, then I know what bass to choose to get that sound. You know, I'll just find a straight up P bass because you know, this one is set up like a P bass, uh, PJ bass, whatever. Uh, so I, I know what sound to choose. So having a reference uh, to answer your question, if I have to come up with an original bass line or something, I'm gonna have something to feed off of that gives me a starting point. That way I'm not completely starting from scratch. Now, if they want something, they're like, hey, give me something just off the cuff, whatever you come up with, we're going to roll with it, you know? Well, then then you have a little bit more, um, you have a little bit more freedom to be completely creative. But if you're stumped, you don't have an idea, look for something, look for a reference, ask the artist, ask the producer for a reference and and pull, pull away from that idea. I ain't say you got to, you know what I'm saying, uh, copy that, but use that to your advantage you know what i'm saying we don't have to reinvent uh, reinvent the wheel so montreal sunday morning mass radio show hello hello to you how do you uh all right i think i'm reading these comments it's a it's a, it's a habit I, i'm gonna play and i'm gonna get off because this video is not supposed to be long uh, all right poland what's up m uh klinger hello to you uh good looking fleece okay all right, I think you're talking about the the uh, the hoodie. Thank you. These are available right below this video uh, in my store. You can find these. All right, Fabian, what's up, man? Uh, all right, so here we go. I haven't tuned this bass either, so this should be interesting. <laughs> Thank you. 
Same thing. I'm running this bass the same way I ran the other two basses. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting this sound just the same way. And, and going through and dialing in whatever tones I like, the ones I don't like, I'll pull them out. All right. Let's see what we got here. completely different tone from the uh it has a completely different tone from the uh warrior wouldn't hurt to change my strings either uh it's still it's getting out pretty good That's the story. Yeah, this bass is hot, like loud. So, um, Brazil, Wagner, what's up, man? Uh, <laughs> your lines are so lyrical, it's insane. Thank you so much. I, I'm, I can't help but turn off that singer in my head. It's like I'm always singing over whatever it is I'm doing. Let me save that. Uh, let me save that loop here. I suppose it'd be off of here. I don't really suppose it to still be on, on right now. Here, let's see if we can run this tuner really fast. I don't want to kill my, my uh, viewers with perfect pitch. I don't want to kill you <laughs> with this slightly off pitch bass. All right. Do you prefer to play bass in active or passive mode um i prefer active personally i prefer active basses yeah i prefer active basses so just just my preference and just what i've grown accustomed to and like that tone trishan thank you i appreciate it all right there we go all right let's see if we can come up with something else really quick yeah there's nothing on that channel record let's do it again Thank you. 
ideas together.
change this battery. I wasn't planning on being here this long. That's why the camera died. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed this again I just wanted to get on here and share some tips uh, with you about how to get that tone that tone that I've been constantly being asked about so uh, hopefully you know you guys can use this as something that helps you improve your playing overall if you could do me a huge favor if you're not already doing it and follow me at um, J Morgan bass one uh, on Instagram if you're not already doing that some of you guys might have been around for a while and you thought you were following me on Instagram already uh, yeah that page got hacked so you are no longer following me I don't know who you're following but that's not me <laughs> so J Morgan base one is my new channel I'm trying to build that back up if you want to let somebody know about it by all means please do and uh, yeah I'm gonna be releasing more content more stuff is coming you guys way so hopefully Again, you enjoy so far uh, what you've seen. And if you haven't checked out my latest video, full length video, be sure and go back um, and check that video out. The name of the video is Why Am I Doing This? And I think it's something that's going to really help you guys if you are creative, if you're trying to come up with anything creative. And sometimes you experience like writer's block or just, you know, you want to quit. Basically, this video is for you. So be sure to go back and check that out. I'm releasing shorts as well on the channel a lot i'm putting up a lot of shorts so be sure to check those out as well so anyway guys uh for any more information you want to find out about me about bass lessons and those types of things you can check those out at jermainmorgan.net i will put that up there where you can see that as well it's in the chat but jermainmorgan.net if you want to know a little bit more about one-on-one -on -one coaching calls with me i'm very very limited on spaces with that so only serious <laughs> only serious people um but uh I, I would love to share if you are serious about being coached uh with me or having those one-on-one -on -one lessons with me go to the website learn a little bit more about that uh you'll find everything there i have some courses and all that stuff available for you all who are having trouble with coming up with licks and some of the stuff that i was playing in terms of building your vocabulary i've created like riffs and licks uh library um like there is a volume one and there's a volume two. And what I'm doing in this is I'm showing you the licks, but it's not necessarily so you can learn how to play like me or trying to uh, learn all of my secrets, uh, so to speak. But it's me giving you um, a starting point, if you will, or giving you something to feed off of to help you to develop your own ideas. Because if you can take the concepts of these licks and these ideas that I'm creating you can take them and make your own stuff with them. You know what I'm saying? So you can take that stuff and embellish it. And if you have 20 to 25 licks to go from, it's like, it's just the sky's the limit from there. You just keep continuing to create more and more stuff. I show them to you. I give them to you in context so you can get, you know, where you can put this stuff at and you get that good idea and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm way over time as usual, but it's been fun. I always like hanging out. I think that's why. I go over it, but I, I enjoy talking to you guys. So hopefully you found something really, really helpful here. So, all right. I am out, guys. Have a great day. And thank you again. This has been Jermaine Morgan. And if you hadn't hit that subscribe button and turn on my bell notifications, do it now. You ain't do it. <laughs> anyway, y'all, I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm out. Peace.